Harvard Divinity School. Poetry Reading, September 9th, 2024. Somehow I don't recognize everyone. I recognize a lot of people, but for those of you who are new, um, Peripheries is a, uh, we run events at the Center for Study of World Religions like this one. This is our first event of the year. Um, poetry readings, workshops, um, and craft talks. We're also a journal, annual journal. I'll leave these over there and you can take a look at them. Um, and we have our first poetry competition judged by Josh Bell. Um, it, poems are due on fifth, October 15th. <laughs> Emma and Sam also work for peripheries. <laughs> um, Okay, so first event of the academic year, which we scheduled at the last minute on the only evening we could get these four poets to converge. And unfortunately, Jackie will be online from New York. Um, four poets, so I'm gonna keep my introductions really short. I've been telling people that this will be the fun or funniest event because how I connect these four poets together in my mind is their humor. And I mean humor, though, in a profound sense of bringing joy, but also never compromising on that which breaks through humor, that which needs to be said and said with urgency, and which their humor allows to be heard open-heartedly. So I'm going to start with Jackie since she's in the ether. Um, we're going to find her. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. And now I'm introducing you. <laughs> um, your face is huge. Okay. Um, in a good way. In a great way. Um, so Jackie is a very good friend of ours. Um, we had, a lot of us had the privilege of spending time closely reading early drafts of the poems that appeared in the Sunflower Cast, a spell to save us from the void, which was um, a National Book Award finalist and we feel we can claim some of this honor. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> um, and I think even some people might appear in that book. Um, Jackie is also, of course, the famous author of Carceral Capitalism and Assistant Professor of American Studies and Ethnicity at USC. And now Jackie will kick the night off. Thank you so much. You can claim it all. I, I can't I don't even feel responsible for dreams that I write. I'm just like the vessel for it. So give the uh, National Book Award finalist honor to my unconscious, the dream world, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm I have major FOMO not being there with you tonight um, because so many of my friends I know are in this room right now and friends I know from different contexts. So I was very excited to be able to see people meet each other and to make the hang with you all. Uh, but I had to take care of some annoying bureaucratic stuff in New York. So I'm really sad to not be there with you all. Um, I just wanted to say that I will be in uh, Cambridge one last time before I leave the country. So let's be in touch about getting together and I can properly say goodbye to people in Cambridge um, because I would love- So whoever's there that I know, no, I'm just joking. Um, no, but I, I want to actually have a proper goodbye to people because there's so many people I've, I've also gotten to know over the last year through taking Jory's last workshop as well. So I would, I would love to say hi and goodbye to you all. Um, so I'm just going to read a piece that I decided to read just because a phrase um, from it was lodged in, in my head. But I realized it's um, a piece about um, 
just some thoughts that were drifting through my head when I moved to Cambridge. And I realized this piece also has a bit about Scotland in it. So I think I'm constellating Cambridge and Scotland because Nat Raha, who's reading tonight, is coming from Scotland. Um, and maybe I'm kind of starting to feel a little bit sad about saying goodbye uh, to Cambridge for the time being. So this piece is called, What is This Orgy of Song? And this is from um, my most recent book, Alien Daughters Walk Into the Sun. What is this conspiracy of voice, the friend's voice who sings this time, William Blake's laughing song? When the painted birds laugh in the shade, when our table with cherries and nuts is spread, come live and be merry and join with me to sing the sweet chorus of ha ha he. What is this orgy of song in the canopy above my head? What is the lightness of walking alone outside? Or what I find when I force myself to stop reading and walk across the bridge over the Charles River at sunset. The breeze becomes an analgesic, the cop inside my head is gagged, and the light on the water mimics a 4th of July sparkle that sparkles forever as a loop of light growing in the mind of the universe, a pulsating mass of iridescent cerebral matter which any of you can plug into at any time just by accepting that perdition is not where you are condemned to dwell, that at any moment you can will the cosmic umbilical cords to drop from the light mine for you to plug into your foreheads. So it was all just a joke. My head played on me, hell, Hell was just a joke I could unbelieve. In the poem, what was it I said? You do, you do undo. My being invaginated by the levity of stealing all the food I can while sauntering through the party in my machine gun leggings. What is the nature of your being? Chu Young describes me as a comedian but why is it that some know me as a dour, joyless, depressive? White people? Well, I guess not all of them. Memory of a conversation I had in Claire's car about substance, Spinoza, friendship, and bad mixtures. What mixes well with me is sun. But it's difficult to reconcile this with being a creature of the night. On the nighttime walk to the library, I close my eyes and am, am impaled by the light. The street lights are false moons. Behind the tree, the real moon. Through a window in the science center, I see a man looking into a microscope. Above him, a room in which the sign lasers at use is plastered. The bio and cyberneticians are at work. I feel them everywhere in Cambridge engineering our collective death. Around the corner, a teenage boy folds his apron in the banh mi food truck. His shift has just finished and soon he'll be home or in the bed of a lover. I remember feeling inside my head, but then getting hit by the sun from behind a tree. I look up into the song. The wind breathes yellow rain. It falls from branches as bits of yellow confetti cut out of construction paper, shards of yellow littering the campus. The leaves stick to the bottom of the shoes of the students and are dragged into the library. The trees cry light so that we may be happy. Are you happy? The German mathematician walks by. He seems not to recognize me. I want to find L, but I haven't got my phone on me. 
The yellow leaves transport me to the back seat of Nat's car, sitting next to Dana, pointing out the leaves to him, the way they catch the light on their way down. To be on the road, it felt like an adolescent summer, my last week of freedom. But for the punks, the summer never ends. There's no back to school to punctuate leisure time, for time does not revolve around the beginning and end of a semester. And so on the same day I start school, I receive a postcard from Steve of a picture of him and Julian hopping trains across the BC Rockies. But these short train hopping and sailing excursions are just a precursor to Steve's main adventure, sailing to Hawaii, where I'm sure Moxie will meet him on an app coding trip. And this app coding trip turned into the Signal app, the encrypted messaging app. I want to write to Steve, take me with you, but there's no return address. He's on the move. When Dana asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said, a traveler. In the postcard photo, both Steve and Julian are wearing black jackets. Steve is doing a peace sign and Julian is flicking off the camera. Are they caricaturing their respective temperaments? I remember the summer I met them both. I remember somehow finding my way to Julian's house through Moxie as I did not as I didn't know him then. As we sat in his living room talking, he told me stories about his travels across Central America. And then it clicked. He was the author of the only zine I brought with me that summer. A zine I randomly plucked from the new college zine library titled One Way Ticket. 31 and 32 years old and still oogles, Steve jokes in his letter. Julian is in a PhD program now, studying continental philosophy, still falling in love like it's the first time. Maybe it's okay to take a break from concepts, theories, ideas, even literature, to try to find my way back to the non-teleological event of writing a writing that is comfortable enough with itself to be simple, to just feel out the texture of a walk or being with others, small observations. So when people ask me what I'm working on, I can say nothing. I have no grand statements for you. I am a life like you, and this is about that. As I observe the uneven brick sidewalk of Oxford Street, I remembered the sensation of what was once the most distinct of all feelings for me, gratitude. It seemed to radiate from everything. I love strangers. I love to watch the way they were present with each other. The more confused they appeared to me, the more I loved them. I loved the backs of their heads while walking down crowded streets. I love Matthias for sitting with me in the quimming cafes, letting me in against his better judgment. I love the dog shit paved streets of Govan, Glasgow, the majesty of Buchanan Street and the thoroughfares of foreign towns, walking down them in the warped consciousness of toothaches. Busby Station, when Juyun said it, our train rides came back to me. The timbre of a certain accent heard over an intercom, seared into our minds. I even love when Nemo the Dalmatian stole the fruitcake in Nosh and Cloudberry's living room. 
I love the steam rising from the old houses on a rare sunny day in Glasgow. Today the sun was bright, but it rained for only an hour. And this hour of rain was synchronized exactly with my counseling session. From, from the fourth floor of the Harvard University Health Services building, I watched a storm rage and violently whip the leaves of a tree while the psychologist asked me questions about my depression. I even loved everything bad for it was part of the whole of life. But this mentality also manifests as a self-destructive inability to stay mad at anyone because she was real to me. I could not hate her. Was the rain sent to cleanse me? Genuflect because there is gratitude an all pervasive feeling of contrition Look at how my hatred softens. It is supple like silken tofu. My skin betrays me by failing as a barrier. But what does this ineptitude of skin allow me? I love coasting down the bridge into Lido Key. I love the weeping willows of Messia. I love my spice shelf in the house I lived in with P. I love the smell of the cool air coming in through the cracks of my good view porch room, walking down the snowy Hamden street on my birthday. I have no grand statements for you. I have a bowl of pennies, some sentences and half sentences scraps of pattern origami paper. I have the party colored lights on the bridge into Poughkeepsie, whispers in the backseat of a car, daydreams of lives epically lived, but epic in feeling, not wealth or importance. I have a pigeon crashing into a glass walkway, falling to the ground and dying twitching on the ground, the death rose, the way it stared at me right before dying. L, my dad and I were all deeply disturbed. As we pried ourselves from the distressing scene, my father told us the story of the man who killed the last passenger pigeon, how these pigeons were once so abundant they blotted out the sky. We were looking for a place to eat. There's history in every micro transaction, in glances exchanged between strangers, and even in the tear I left on the Woodbury table, the way the reflection of the light in the tear made it look like an eyeball with a laser pupil. The night will be good to you if you can resist the urge to blot out feeling with molecules that will li make life bearable, but less round. There is a night waiting for you where you kill the fear that has been holding you hostage. Loving as an owl watching at night from a tree, arboreal creature we are made of feather, bliss, borrowed light. Write yourself into a state again, love and then sleep, some backtracking, but all is not lost. You are free, but for how long? Life becomes this mythology of the everyday made by freaks on their lonely, unscripted journeys. Thank you. Also shout out to Stephanie Burt who found my journal on the steps of Lamont Library because I was like so out of it during this period. I just like was journaling and left my journal behind. Thanks for returning it to me. Um, I feel like I should.
a sponge now. Okay. Um, um, that was really beautiful. And um, I lived 10 years in Cambridge and 10 years in Scotland. So it felt really beautiful and affirmative. Um, I'm going to introduce Ethan Seeley. Um, he asked me the other day earnestly whether he should be a poet or stand-up comedian. <laughs> I think he has combined both and will. Um, Ethan is also our dear friend. He attended Harvard Divinity School and he read for peripheries. He lives at the moment in Western Massachusetts, but will sadly be relocating soon to NYU, where he will be the Wiley Burkhofer Fellow in Poetry at New York University, obviously. Ethan. Hey. What's up, Center for the Study of World Religions? Hi, Jackie. Um, I've only, I'm a little nervous. I've only done, this is my second time, like, reading poetry in public. And I'm happy to say that uh, Jackie Wang has been a presence at, at both of that. I wrote Jackie both times, so it feels, like, very warm and, and very good to me um, since She's a, a, a dear friend, and, and Shira, thank you, Shira, for bringing me here, and everybody else. Um, but I'm, I'll just let me know if I, I go on too long. I'm not going to drag this out too long, but um, I got some poems to read for you. Um, this first one's called The Hundred Years' War. At the end of the Hundred Years' War, everyone was tired. A few hours before dusk, a bell rang and a loud vo voice said, that's all, folks. So that was a hundred years. It was sometimes in the 14th or 15th century, a Wednesday, and I felt like having a beer. The buds were just beginning to come out on the trees, and they had that sour smell when their vegetable minds turned to sex and reproduction. I went to find my friend Gustav, and we sat down on a bench with a couple of beers, the real dark stuff with a lot of foam on top. Gustav was missing his right hand. He said, I can't even remember how it happened, but sometimes I'll wake up after dreaming about someone stealing my horse, Silhouette, and I'll go out to the barn to check that she's still there, and I'll reach up for the bridle with my right hand, and I don't even think about it, but she's still there every time. I'm missing a bunch of flesh too, I thought, but you don't hear me going on about it. And I'd never give my horse a goddamn asinine name like Silhouette. That's half the reason we lost the war in the first place. Or did we? For all I knew, in some foggy valley in the Rhineland 65 years ago, I cut off Gustav's hand. And that's how we became friends. Um, thanks. Uh, this one's called, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, there's so many people that have been in workshop or read like versions of these poems. It's a little, yeah, it's wonderful. I'd be remiss not, not to mention, uh, my teachers, I guess, which is, um, with Jory Graham and, and Josh Bell here at Harvard, who've really, I don't know, and of course Shira and Emma and everyone, and Sam and Alex, one of my favorite poets, and like all these people, so um, who have all like crafted all of these. I feel like collectively, um, got a lot of papers here. Um, I'm gonna call, or I'm gonna read this one. Is this one's called Nature? Is that the journal, Nature? My mom's a biochemist. I used to read it a lot as a as a child. It's like poetry, like all these like very like uh, serious, you know, just poet nature, science, nature. In the latest issue, the human heart is revealed 
to be made up of tiny filaments working overtime to contract, to expand temporarily. Look at this cartoon diagram, each color a protein wound like a tangle of birthday balloon tails. And here we have our model of an artificial heart, or rather two genetically modified pig hearts beating inside the chests of two brain-dead human recipients who must not wink or pause the pulsing inside their dim cavities. Fold the page and see a new photo of the large Magellanic cloud, its mass unknown. This one's um, called uh, Bionic Avatars. I know Jackie likes this one, so I thought I'd read it again. Uh, she asked me to read it the first um, one, so it's called, yeah, Bionic Avatars. The tech billionaire hated death. He hated it more than the average person who hates it a lot. In meetings, he was always going on about telomeres and apoptosis. Make a note. He declared war against death at both the macro and the micro level. And the other people gathered around the table, nodded, scratched invi invisible itches. He planned to live for a thousand years, but not in a weird way like Dracula. Mm, make a note. Construct bionic avatars. Then he goes home and eats a dry muffin and drinks a protein shake and wipes most of the crumbs off his pants. In his bedroom, he watches amateur porn on a large screen because he likes to see what non-billionaires look like naked. He clicks on a video. The tech billionaire is disgusted. He can hear the television on in the background. He rec recognizes the theme song to Friends. He can hear the laugh track. The tech billionaire misses the bus, so his mom has to give him a ride to work. It is his first day of being a tech billionaire, and he wonders if the other employees will laugh at him. A lot of people think being a tech billionaire is easy, but turns out it isn't. First of all, you have to meet with politicians and pretend you like them. Secondly, your skin gets dry sometimes. Sometimes whole bits of skin fall off and you have to replace them with wet paper. Sometimes a bridge collapses and it's your fault somehow. Sometimes you reap the whirlwind. <laughs> Decisions. How about this one? It's called Someday Soon. We're very honored to be sleeping with you today. <laughs> There's a button located behind your left ear if you need any assistance. That thrumming noise you hear is the background for the rest of your life. These gentlemen will gladly escort your children into the other room now. I've got your test results back. And let me just say, you're obnoxiously kind. Our leading indicators indicate an upsurge in evangelical fervor. My, my, someone's elongated today. Press enter to exit the survey. Press the right button to tear off your mouth. No one is trying to take away your despair. I am so glad you could join us. Don't use that tone with me, young lady. I'm your executive producer. This replica of your childhood home took us months to construct. And now, for the climax, we are going to burn it. If you reach into the pocket of the seat back in front of you, you will find the words to an incomprehensibly beautiful anthem. I encourage you all to sing along.
<laughs> got a lot of papers. Yeah. Um, it's basically going to come down to what I draw out of this pile next here. Uh, let's see, that one. Oh, they're printed on the front and the back. So, yeah, we got um, this one's about uh, this town I live in called Turner's Falls, Massachusetts. I got a couple about Turner's Falls. Maybe we'll do like, maybe do one of them. Uh, this one's called And the Turbine Stopped. I showed this to some people at various institutions, um, and they thought it was like a magical wonderland. But really, it was just me walking around where I live and writing down what I saw. So um, it's called, yeah, and the turbine stopped. We have visited your falls. We have seen the dam and the fish ladder, where the blue back shad struggle against the stream. We have opened the candy stores. We have toured your historical museum complex, its wide halls dedicated to the memory of your once humming lumber and or steel mill. We have perused the police blotter and we have noted an alarming rise in children who have taken to their tree houses and won't come down. We have tasted your pineapple flavored micro brews. We have restored harsh penalties for avian malfeasance. We have attended your high school's production of The Crucible for three consecutive years. Every year we have applauded the performance of Ms. Amy Dennison, a performance that can only be described as electrifying. <laughs> we have evicted all the squirrels. We have urinated on no less than three municipal vehicles. Yes, mistakes were made. People were maimed, some in unspeakable ways. The plaque commemorating the massacre will, unfortunately, have to go. We have nothing further to report, except a flat screen TV leaning against the fire hydrant next to the mailbox where someone has spray painted the word drugs. <laughs> That's with a Z. <laughs> On the black screen, the shadow world should be reflected. The curbside snow, the distant peaks, a young man has lost his drone across the river, is heading toward an island one or two terriers in the vicinity. A pair of guinea hens is behaving strangely in the parking lot of the food city. The lights flicker in the aisles. A woodpecker has spent all afternoon dissecting a tree limb. The sidewalk is covered with the tree. As the sun sets, a woman is still balanced on top of a ladder, painting a sign. What? One more? One, more? Uh, one uh, short, short one. One more. Uh, one. All right. All right. All right. We're gonna do this. All right. I'm gonna read this one called um, "Song of Songs," um, which, it, since it's the center for the study of world religions, I'm sure someone is familiar with the with, with the Hebrew Bible. With uh, in the Hebrew, it's uh, "Shir Hasharim." Um, and so I, it's kind of, I feel like it's dedicated to my, my dear friend Shira, who put this all together for us. Uh, Shira Hasharim, the Song of Songs. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, well, you'll get the conceit. It's all like, it's all just O's, basically. It's like, it's just some Olympian kind of nonsense I was into for a while, but people seem to like this one, so I just thought I'd read it and like, um, Damn, this is like being recorded for posterity. All right. Um, uh, Song of Songs. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry for anyone who watches this in the future. <clears throat> Robocop strolls downtown to follow no good goons who shoot common crooks. Hollywood's nonstop tomorrows go vroom, vroom. 
God's not wrong, got cosmos on lockdown. Postdocs opt for monkhood, not lots of blowjobs. Schoolwork, not off-color porn plots. Profs co-opt God's words for so-so books on Solomon's songs. Two goth boys gone fond of non-orthodox protocols bow down to Moloch's consorts. Off work bookworms foxtrot to songs of cool blondes who slowly croon doo-wop or Motown. Don Johnson logs on to hotsoloboys.com to post photos of Don Johnson's cock. <laughs> Townsfolk kowtow to food stobs who won't chow down on footlong corn dogs. On Tom's porch, mobs of phlox blossoms form whorls of sloppy color. Oh, Tom's on shrooms. <laughs> Most doctors own Volvos to go to and fro from Toronto to Boston, both hot spots for cowpox. Now look how flocks of crows roost only on rooftops of mom and pop shops. How monsoons flood low spots, bottoms of bogs or mossy pools. Frost swoops down on crosstown woodlots. So who knows how forms morph? Who knows how forms morph? Cow god to owl god, body to rock to gorgon. Cold protons glom onto two gold horns. Foot born from hoof, logos on workshop doors. Don't stop now, O oh moon of Hong Kong, of Solomon, color of ox blood. I'll do one more very short one after that, and we'll, we'll wrap it up. I'm just so honored to be on this like lineup with such luminaries. And, uh, um, uh, some other trees. I think it's good to read. I don't know. I just want to read something that like I'm kind of working on, or it's like I don't know, trying to figure out as I go. From the trees. I learned verticality, lifted my nose off the poodle-soaked mulch, thrust my shoulders back and popped my skull on. They showed me how to walk with my feet planted. Now we walk around pollinating each other's eyeballs. Oops, I'm pregnant. I learned to sneeze little apple winds on the sidewalk sleeve. I learned why we die, but in the interest of time, I'm going to have to leave it there. <laughs> I told you it would be fun. <laughs> um, okay. So about five years ago, I was blown away listening to Nat Raha read in Berlin at a launch for a very cool translation magazine that some Australian friends run there called Artichoke. And periphery should be so cool, so we should also get Nat Raha. Um, her poetry is of an experimental queer lyric and resistance to racial capitalism. Her mo most recent of three poetry collections, but now I'm worried it's four and I messed that up. Yes, it is. Is of Siren's Body and Fault Lines, but there's also this, which is new and is called Apparition Nines and is over there probably for sale. Um, she is lecturer in fine art critical studies at the Glasgow School of Arts and publishes important criticism and theory, which you will discover later when you Google her. Hey. Hi. Hi.
thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks for Shira for organizing all of this. Um, I feel like sh cutting my reading a little bit. Is that cool? Or s should I go long or go? Okay, it's fine. I'll go long. Let's go long. Um, it's it's been nine years since I've been in Cambridge, which is hilarious because the book's called Nine, and um, and it's the 9th of September. This all just I only know, thought about this in the last twenty minutes. I'm not even joking. Um, uh, yeah, this is this. After, I'm going to read from this new book that's coming out from Nightboat imminently, uh, but there's some copies over there. Um, all of the poems are nine lines long, and they all have nine syllable lines. Um, this is a form invented by a close friend of mine, uh, the Niner. Um, my, my friend's name is Mendoza. They're an experimental poet based in London. I'm going to read the first nine poems, and I'm going to read nine more, and then I'm going to read something else. <clears throat> this of obscure cosmos. <gasps> Violence reiterated, vivid, paused, blood in fire and synthetics, s silver and liquid, eyes stenciled brick, quote, as <gasps> authors who could not conceive us and hold <gasps> to have lived in possible gravity, chilled and <gasps> all known ways. <coughs> I'm crashing the party, by the way. I was going to say that out loud. It's fine. <laughs> Decima unmade and horny. Our shaven flesh and locks dined on black beans, corn and sugar. Vagabonds, tinkers, tricksters and jailbirds had demanded our bodies owe oh, fascist rags, codes and division. S systematic flesh and capitals. Nostalgia imposed and gen de evative nations. Soil. Agree, your logic treacherous, political and philosophic distribution of thought and active itty engineered divestment, hot policing and exotic. But some of us want to keep our jobs. That's a quote. In your demand that we flesh nice for, for being and pills had abolished your entitlements, our. Saxes and flashes constituted from the women and femmes who charged. You, pale and sweating majorities, smears and intonations, assured arrogant thieves. If your violence a source of pleasure, we trust our anxious days and juts where once bridges, borders, decline winter bones, gorgeous, warm. <clears throat> Girl, if we are citizens of nowhere, a threat to the tone and image composed, cute lace, we divine fams know here to dissect your impositions so late in the day, bark organs in casual violence, your pleasure, excruciate living, and the beauty about our eyelines. This decades old violence for bored stars and black salt. She said the possible diminished order administered names. Heart and solstered eyes fall into the wage day. Turbulent shimmer out of discourse traded close, pinned ordinary trappings and verse to squat, dislocate. In nationhood, your reveries, 500 truncated years, we dined on stolen whiskey, tar, menaced, tyrial bones, forced to find work, a rustic allegory, regen, narrating cities and aggressions, light and false nature conditioned, cohered by skins, separated, crashed, lit. At trial, your crimes of invention, in my charred gold mini dress, cremated homes, debt and, and circuits, capital commission and hate, dined on flour, divine salt and, and threads of your flags, aroused, our vulgar comedy, drives and erotics, silenced beliefs and rituals, disintegrating, 
We impossible siblings, lobes, sore, close hairs and gleaming, our traumas dismissed, bitter salt stream in cheeks spark structurally. Your lavish, sheer divisions, devaluations, institute ions, blood, harmonics of work, migration and con, jiggle, flicker, track memory. Already getting taller as the reading goes on. This is good. As all the exits shut, reverse the town hall, each riot van engine removed, chassis neomarine ecology, sensate vessels history, bitter salt, bitter buried sounds, ride it up the walk, seen before tarmac, babe, hold frequencies to be removed from air. What spells war, your desperate at internal co coloniality, riots, food, 38 harvest, s arctic, and lungs on fire, relations between things, exchanged labor, wages, dispossessions, the centuries we disintegrate, found new feelings, consciousness, actions what futures you seize and split chaos and falsehoods your play of affections your extra legal arm our specter the reparation of centuries your thieved and hoarded borders dissolve formations and patriots block bodies against your empire raids This is after an album by the artist Kindness called Something Like a War. And softness is weapon, casting logics callous from us, arms as air, as sea, sensation spun, unbinds in refusal, slow, a sequence of days, expanse, retuned, keep near your pastel tones depth sights a heart on keys you grant yourself femme vox affections unfurl of all taken from bodies our remaining hunger and with it your price tags on sustenance delayed payments imaginary chains of power purchase what we call to abolish. We reassembled our affections and solidarities, our cracked, efflorescent hands. On the stand, list your horrors, proclamations and divestments, pour blood from the crown and ideo, your archaic printed murders, bludgeon civilized to this day. Against the name of your inflictions, your rubble and basic hatred turn hands to gather stolen our lives and bodies back this is after jose esteban munoz is the sense of brown this organization harsh indignation of houses our trappings and displacement vacancies movements, crossing belts and bridges, intensive hope, unit care, emergent cries to line under skin and skull, skin and soul. A task to touch the space of sensation, dynamic, dynamite. Justice is a practice to unfold, reverse the future, turn the truth up from soil in the everyday, compelled, all that crashes with the pandemic, all that's held against need. And after our affections, dozed regressive histories, bloom alternate truths, membranes 
deteriorate, toxicity, our fevers and constellations, trying to unstick garish riches, preach to scold all corners, patterns for thought, feeling action, and hold blessings, pleasures, oxygen, and fear, tears, look me in the eyes with love. So, uh, that's going to maybe be some rustling. Um, I'm going to read uh, a, long, a long poem. Just got some writing on the back. Um, well, it's long ish. It's, uh, it's called Retributions. It's for my good friend Nisha Ramaya, who's a poet based in London. Um, I wrote this poem pretty much exactly two years ago. It's kind of. I was in, in a woodland, in a coppiced woodland that was like this, it's got this kind of like 500 year old root system and all the trees were last coppiced during World War, at the end of World War I in Southwest Scotland. And she went back there a couple of weeks ago, um, having, yeah, trying to think about uh, questions around survivor embodiment. And um, yeah, oh wait, I'm gonna do something while I'm talking. Um, pull something up and the po the poem is also kind of responding to um sorry i'm going to this is excuse me if i open somebody's tab um the poem's also responding to this um artwork by you can't, you can't see it oh i killed it uh jack it is uh, there you go um it's responding to this artwork by shitaba biswas who's a, a contemporary uh, south asian artist who lives in the uk he's based in the uk she's bengali and um, this work's actually on display in Edinburgh, so if until the end of the year, come to Edinburgh, Jackie, come to Edinburgh. Um, and uh, yeah, what do I want to say? So it's a it's a portrait of the of the goddess Kali. It's called Housewives with Steak Knives. Uh, we don't want to sign up to art now. Uh, that's fine. And um, as you can maybe see, she's uh, she's um, garlanded with a garland of heads of various 20th century figures. This works from 1984. And she's holding the head of a decapitated somebody, a colonizer. And she's also holding a, a small flag which has a Artemisia Gentilesi painting on it. Um, so this work's kind of also responding to that. And so the third thing is, if you've been following what's been going on in East in North uh, well in Eastern India, especially in and around Kolkata, there's a, a feminist movement that's erupted in the last month um, after the kind of horrific rape and murder of a 31 year old doctor who worked at this hospital called R. G. Kur um, in Kolkata, and the the women, queer and trans folks, and men in solidarity with with them with us have been on the streets in Kolkata for like the past three past month and uh, including tonight. So I kind of wanted to read this and feeling through all of these things, thinking about them. Retributions, it's got a series of epigraphs throughout the text, so I'll read them as we go. <clears throat> At the edge of the world, I wait for the travelers who will not come. It's from Amé Césaire's Miraculous Weapons. Mm. The courtesies of order of really forms pursued from the heart of rage or terror or grief, defame the truth of every human crisis. That's from June Jordan's Civil War. <clears throat> Prelude. Interpersonal fissures, a new norm dis, guarding sociality, like enclosure, a daily practice witness to dust, piling, decimate, cobbles exhumed, a neighbor's muse, eomified, narratives unexcavated from dunes. In the prospect of absolute winter, we itch at palms, fee lines, were out fret. But either ensconced in frost or family, there's little boundedness, carries an alarm of blackbirds, tenor sacks, the next duets for rainfall. Fill these rooms against separability, 
against the stake of deaths. We politicize the relation of holding body minds together without together souls. And Utopia is what we fabricate between us, the now here, the what's been lived, and the future reparative can leave your keys at home, see as ink, even if the book doesn't come to print, plant it with willow, make it ritual, like reading, make the practice of bodying root, plant our miraculous arms or our poems in common, give 40 years, claim the land from capital, tide lines, lips, buckled on the ice of the law. Go into the heart of the city, find seeds mixed, mouths multiple spat in the direction of haters, bleached offices of naval force, administration, permissories on sale to new worlds, drained and undraining fans, aromatics, giddy trace on senses, intensive, lines feeding, winds wept, salt Ing no si a di rive. Go into the heart of the city. <clears throat> the craters under infrastructure for sweat come abandoned feelings from the full force of bodies in movement. Dan, sing where we were found. If there's trust in a generation's length already, divine glass, cinder blocks, fresh concrete and steel, mussels, ground oyster shells, pearlescent rays crushed into them. One. Oh, wrong mic. Shitipa proposes that the fight against fascism imperialism, ethno-nationalism, colonialism, fantasies of owning land under the most dense military occupation, mouth-stabled, arrested intellectuals and emboldened racists, extra-judicial demolitions, echoes encoded, screamed into walls, the divisions and stakes with which a nation is reconstituted, claiming control of our bodies to breathe its vision of future disintegrate small talk as a swerve, and a continual burning of oxygen, would claim an island, materialistic, dig in for gold, construct a prison to strike fear, splintering voice, political economic torpor, populate it with deportations to keep palms from world scheming, from the essential joining and sharing. begins in the home, domestic goddess labor, the entropy of Artemisia pretilata, removing the fish hook and facing the scorn. Eventually, you've little option but to inaugurate a laboratory to implode or diffuse reaction. And we of the line of abolitionists, the duress of placement, a consistent sonic quake we find the kitchen is under, matter, detunes, imprecise, a customed like walls to fracture, a locus of patriarchal compression. Such, we, sharing, preservation, the word, regeneration, vegetables, tinctures and arms of miraculous refusal, generous placelessness, the not here and the dispossession of here, with the lighting, with the lightning, Kadga, the dagger, Mundamala, an ultimate reality of our animate range. Black illuminate flame, black illuminate flame ascend collective scream as fullness of sky as absolute night. Kali could spare a body but no attitude, severs and ackments pattern to service patriarchy, drives vipers into burning peace, turning fear to mort. Gauge and mortar, decimate, arteries of reaction, hatred, drinking the venom from the source, electric, dripping red. In your so noble violences, persons, personifications, beheaded, garlanded. 
of crimes to serve as claims on the earth against humanity, against ecologies, that consume the matter of us to inanimacy, to physical ends, to a whirl in the voice, to streets, elating in fires, voices, tongues, conks, streaming hairs, goddess, radiant arms that are her arms, that are our arms, that are her arms, that are our arms, that are her arms, that are our arms, our her arms, a collective intimate retribution, a riptide, a counter narrative, thunder, alternate truths, amidst the becoming chaotic shreds, freedom's work, admonished, abject, what's left by flesh, sediment, trashed, sense to skin, spine, laid in the weight like a nightmare, wormhole, potentia, bad time travel, craters trapping, verbera, soundings, harms, simmer under skin, echo, radio, active, half life's a glow, a erupt, barking, fibrous indensities disappeared, a traumatic practice of embodied resistance, left to subsist on a gratitude for life. Scars witness, rememory the social body. The worlds we forge atop to decompose, a f ev e christ he ch Amber's freedom and the marvelous Aya like magma runs like our own blood. A mass make life in defiant multiplicity that their laws and disappearances fail to extinguish. To rest from structural violence, the possibilities of maintenance of life towards a reparative practice of the everyday. Interlude. So she was afraid. It's Eduardo Glissant. Exchange presupposes the system blowing open. Ears out to ocean's depth, ancestral surroundings on peaks and ebbs. By now, the freeze of our hands, years of body mind shielding break wind, to record sound tide. Add months without touch, multiply for the increased speed of the Earth's rotation. Lost count of moons between meetings, pace of breathing, tigers, growth of the mangle. And from the floor of the woods, awake, ah, boreal interstices, a lattice incarnate as coppice of roots predating enclosure, Cromwell. Coming, the coming up in the legacy of war, clear cut, the return of the repressed. Even deep recesses of peace here, shaped by violence. The forest bears histories of labor, indentured migrant, marginalized, gravitating tides, arms of million drawn into the world, denude, plantea, monocrop, a landscape, Timber, rubber, coconut, Malaya, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, a worker's geography of debt, root and bone. Then called to this neck of the woods, which is Scotland, over winter without coats, drives, the chattering of teeth become anxious grind to grounding the recuperation of an empire. Divisive frosts at black wrists, a population to a general strike. Fabricating a refusal of the world in your image to sing <clears throat> the ashes and oaks, resonance, giving back to ground. Scale the energy, photosynthetic, jewels in light and labor, 
caught and rooted here. Bare, turbulent breeze, recluded to the carving burn. It's hard to know the bliss of a canopy in a meddling climate. A drenching clarity, offered, handed, fill the wrong kind of silent summer, late with chant, words to steed de dejection. <clears throat> Throw, tear the groove. I'm gonna do that again, I messed up. Throw, tear the groove. <gasps> Present, anticipatory for Virgo's moon, layered in the return of night. Co-presence, the page is co-presence, yet still in trappings port, this island. In the conjure of limbs and flesh commit. Meant to non-locality, proposing it, ever open to free exchange, energetics transfer in and out of and undoing this welding. In the conjure of limbs and flesh commit. Train an eye to move and witness, body it like a warehouse or atelier. Dropping assumptions, logics, abjection, patterns unholding, logger, rhythmics that like to fly. Ease yourself down. Body minds un remember spin delaying freaks refuse these conditions of destruction. Fuchsia and blaze and Like the reveal when the light comes up, some verdant brownnesses to femme. All that beauty brought through the room is a kind of love. But the beauty subsides. And fuck, we're back in the domestic. Vox stretched over hearts, these frequencies lingering in us, in lives, proxim, me, Claude Cahoon, he's my cat and Gainer carrying bare paws. <clears throat> Is it so? Don't wanna let you go. Never can say goodbye, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Coda, Pome Aurore Boreale, me sauce me mon ami, Pomona mi ma femme mon autori. Please excuse my French. This is a uh, dare to dream of a peaceful life. Peaceful here does not mean a pacification or appeasing, but a politics and a practice of solidarity, love, and self defense. It's Francois Vergès. <coughs> Dilate eyes on galaxies, autumn heat, unbelieving carceral nights. We recolor the cities with visions of love, dusks, truth in harm, warm flesh after its weaponization. Can sacred image sound so loud to quell the violence that would follow us a hundred orbits of the earth? Or does the power we envision as living stop you in fear? to question why you come to be scared of our blessed power. Ritualize the beckoning winter, hours lost for a lack of national preparedness. Practice the negation of hunger, a fire for this endless night. Danced against prohibitions, spun and thrown into the fire. There'll be days when survival stops all work, 
when flesh fishes on the absorption of lava, when our admission of pleasure moves us on the floors of the world, not only will we live, hand the scissors for their hair, fourth voices on high tide, a source, how ever of evenings turbulent, emptied air, insects break like catastrophic economies, uncertain of stooping nations, hung like a garlanded half lunar face. What are you afraid of? Houses will not hold for themselves. Re-narrating the black machete, fells for survival on anointed earth, for life to return to ground. Hold out your tongue. Thanks. I don't know how to do that. Okay. You get it, you get it. So, sorry, we, um, we're keeping you a, a little late because, and we started a bit early or late, depending on what um, poster you saw. But okay, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone has gotten the chance to see Stephanie's glorious introductions to readings, you will understand how intimidating this is for me to introduce Stephanie. Oh, no, no, but no, I can no, only no, no. honor her renown in this by way of contrast and try in my fumbling way to quickly just express our gratitude to Stephanie Bird for her generosity and enthusiasm as a pedagogue and writer. Her poems are also so generous, opening up the strictures of the craft to house superheroes and either, even punctuation marks who get to voice poems themselves. This is to reference her most recent We Are Mermaids. There is no absence of world in Stephanie's writing, a friend said today. <laughs> and Stephanie also brings unsuspecting, the unsus unsuspecting world to poetry in works of criticism such as the brilliantly titled Don't Read Poetry. to be here and I've been I, uh, Jackie have is Jackie still there yes Jackie are you there it's okay no I've just wanted to read with 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 Jackie for like quite some time and and now it's happening and I'm excited and I, I feel like we've been hearing these ambitious world breaking projects that are in touch with the spirit of radical change and here I am with my like little tiny conventional you know jewelry things but um, thank you and and thank you to the center and to to everyone who have been reading with this I'm gonna read a couple of new ones and I will read for a f under 15 minutes I can. Uh, and if, if there's anyone here who's read We Are Mermaids and wants to hear a particular poem from it, I'm, I take requests. Seriously, it's really an honor. Um, do we know? Do we all know what T-shirt cannons are? No. Does somebody want to explain what a T-shirt cannon is? No. What? It fires wrapped up T-shirts. Yeah, that's what it does. You see it in sporting events, and it just goes pew. You see them at like halftime at, at sporting events. Yeah. We just know, do people want to hear a poem spoken by a t-shirt cannon? Yeah. Okay. It's just called t-shirt cannon. You're on. I do not see myself as trigger happy, though detractors call me a loudmouth, distracting and full of hot air. Subtle as a helicopter, made from spring-loaded worry, no tract and without compunction. No one can say I haven't tried. My favorite songs are bangers and on-your-feet anthems, whose four-on-the-floor beat follows their function. These little ones once came to me all balled up and shiny wrapped like tiny pillows. They could never travel without my prior approval. Until they got bigger, no one else knew how they felt or what they meant. 
My aim is honestly a quandary. A prankster once tried to fill me with super glue. It seems to me that I have taken forever to warm up and never felt ready. And then it's over in the time it takes to pronounce four syllables. Vicissitude, valeity, indelible. I will do almost anything next intermission to avoid feeling hollow. I have become a device, a way to deliver the soft goods you compete to take home. They seek you. They hope you will fold their laundry. I talk to myself when they leave, and then, and then, now stand if you can and try to catch my children who sail through your field of view on their own like a rainbow. I may never see them again. If you didn't guess about eight lines in, my older kid just went away to college. <laughs> yeah. Now you know what the poem's really about, if you didn't guess. Um, I'm not sure that one is ready to read. Student evaluations. The foamy tides daily believe they can climb all the way up the beach. <laughs> it's weird to be at this point where I've like written poems that might go in the next book, but I don't know yet. So are there Swifties here? It's okay if there aren't, I just won't read the Taylor-related poems. That's fine. Okay, well, we, can, we should talk later. We should, we should talk later. I don't want to subject the, like, highbrow, like, David Grubbs, like, experimental sound art fans in here to my poems about Taylor. It's okay. It's okay. I'm just going to, I'm going to try something else first, okay? Um, this is... This is, uh, I've been writing a series of prose poems on fairy tale subjects in collaboration with the great Mara Hampson, who is also a podcaster and voice actor, H-A-M-P-S-O-N, and I encourage you to listen to them read fairy tales, which you can do on any podcast platform of your choice. Uh, so this is a, a collaboration. It's called Little Wobbly Wolf Cubs Their Whole Lives. They're not ghosts. They think they might be ghosts. Their eyes are large and liquid, like deer eyes, or like a small pool after night rain. They know the wood as other animals do. If they look back at you, they do so reluctantly, as if they would rather not reveal their ignorance of things humans expect them to know. Most of them live in a hollow under a great oak log, softened and packed with mosses and leaves. There's a thatch trap door. They sleep there or hide. Those we have met have names, Ivy, she, they, Birch, he, the oldest, the twins, Sparrow, she, and Fox, they. Birch and Ivy seem to be raising the rest. Fox follows, we say, has a crush on Birch, who is manifestly too old for them. They know their own words, safe and family, which are the same. Clean, the same word as right. Dirty means wrong. They like to eat fish from streams, which they catch with their paws or with branches they sharpen all spring. They augment this refreshing, salty diet come August with raspberry canes and fiddlehead ferns. Winter is hard. They have spent the autumn preparing, eating up, growing greater and softer. Bears are competitors whom they avoid. They are not ghosts. They think they might be ghosts. 
Do they look down on the other well-groomed children who had no choice or else for some reason allowed themselves to grow? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is it sad? Is it, is it fun? Do we like it? Um, I have never read this one aloud before. We'll see how it works. And then I guess two from the book. Is that good? Okay, I don't want to keep you for too long. That's two? Two more poems total? I'm just making this up. That's, that's fine. That's fine. You look at me like no, I just, you give me a sign. It's like, like victory, peace, yeah. only two more. I like bunnies. <laughs> Okay. I mean, some people have babysitters, honestly. Like, that's a thing. I have my kid, when my, my one who's now in college, when my, my, both of my little ones who are not little anymore were little, they had uh, childcare across the street from here. So, having some feelings. Okay, I think one more new one, then a couple old ones, and then, then we'll be done. Um, and I was invited last year to read at a high school that has a, in, a high school in, in the Portland suburbs that has a memorial poetry event. And I learned that the backstory of this very well-managed event for these high school students every year was that like 15 years ago, there was a kid who was very, very into poetry who went away to North Carolina and died quite young. And his father, who hadn't quite figured out how to relate to the kid while he was around, decided that future young poets should have an easier time and have poets visit the school. So that's a backstory. So the, the, these were sort of written for Lisa Melanson, the teacher there who runs it. Uh, they're just called main quatrains. We want a future better than the past. Is that so hard? It is. The great world wakes us up with a good morning, no, a good night kiss. The tides complain as Crescent Beach, no, we complain and think that they agree. Sand grains will never care for eggs or plovers, nor the salt wave for the sea. Other people are not like you, except when they are. If you meet all their needs, you can be like a star, on your own in the far heavens, sending your strand of wave particles out, spilling far away beads while speeding away from what used to appear to be your fixed plot. You can try to leave, but you can't leave. Everyone still here will tell you you're brave or naive. I don't know. I think it's finished. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think it is. A couple of mermaids will be done. Is that, is that good? OK. I was, I was just thinking about some of the effects that you were able to get with the poems you read. And I thought maybe I needed to read a, a love poem that well, you'll see. And it's called, and you'll see where this is going unless you don't, Love Poem with a Roll on Its Side. What if you really had never heard it before? The throaty voice, the credibility and strength of a man who could always pick you up and bring you to that one place and keep you there and never abandon you, who would move only slowly and never in circles, a man who would hold your hand gently and yet unrelentingly, whose very hairline 
crept up to a heart-shaped peak whose gentle curves matched black tea-colored eyes and as if penciled brows, so that those farewell free as long as you need me, tones of reassurance in him and him alone could be believed. There is so little on this earth you can trust, so little that comes around and never goes away, but we will always have this gem, this constant companion, this life preserver whose love is a promise you should have seen coming. He is indeed never going to give you up, never going to let you down, never going to run around and desert you. <laughs> you did see that coming, didn't did you? Not. You did not, okay. 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 Um, yeah, if, 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 you, if that wasn't funny, you can go home and, and Google Rickroll and then hate me. I don't know. Do we want superheroes or do we want New Zealand or what do we want? You want superheroes? We, need, we absolutely need superheroes. Who's your favorite member of the X-Men or Marvel Mutants? Too? Say, does anyone have a favorite mutant? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love him. So my Cyclops poem is in a chapbook called For All Mutants. Um, uh, but I, I think about Cyclops all the time. Let me find you. The, the guy gets two weeks of happiness living on the moon with uh, you know two of his three long-term lovers together. And then they take it all away. You know, this is honestly as close to a Cyclops poem. It, it takes place around the time I started reading X Comics. So maybe, maybe you can go with this. But no, he's, have you written a Cyclops poem? It's worth a try. Yeah, yeah email me and I'll send you, I'll send you mine. It's just it's, it's in a, another book. Potomac River, 1982. Where I grew up, it was all wonderful and defensive. The adults were kind and never neglectful, bringing fresh water and grapes, oranges and juice and sunscreen, always asking each kid what we would need or might need in the anticipated future with its goldenrod-bordered cleared field, its soft black top, its estimated yield. We were told to look up with reason, to keep looking forward to a cloudless sky punctuated by drones. You had to hide to be alone. I think that's it. Are we good? Okay. Thank you so much, and thanks to, to Shira for making this happen, and uh, to the... the um, Shir Hashirim and Sponsor, Center for the Study of World Religions Copyright 2024, The President and Fellows of